So as a lot of you guys know, I have been searching for the greatest gaming controller on the market since 2019. And in that time, we have acquired and reviewed more than three dozen controllers. But today I'm super excited because I just bought a brand new controller. It just came out last week by Scuf and it's called the Scuf Envision Pro. And this one's actually a little bit different than the ones we've been reviewing before because all those other controllers are specifically for console gaming and they also work on PC. Now this one right here, it actually is for Windows 10 and 11. So PC gaming only. It's not going to work on a MacBook. It ain't going to work on your PS5 or your Xbox. And this one's actually got a lot of special features and it kind of feels the most custom out of almost any controller we've tested out. So let's go ahead and get into some of these features. And if you guys love tech and gaming, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And opening up our brand new controller, here's everything that's going to come along in the package. First and foremost, we are going to get our Scuf Envision Pro, followed by our wireless USB dongle attachment, a couple blanking plates, a USB-C cable, a pry tool, and of course the spare thumbsticks. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a tour around the controller and show you all the different hardware features that make this thing special. So first and foremost, let's talk about the face of the controller. As you guys can see, the button and joystick placement is kind of reminiscent of the PlayStation controller because you have both of the joysticks at the bottom right next to each other rather than one joystick offset like you would find in a typical Xbox controller. Now, what's interesting here is that they've opted for an Xbox style D-pad. And then if you look at the button array as well, it says A, B, X, Y, just like you'd find on a standard Xbox controller. So it's kind of like got that Frankenstein vibe where it's got PlayStation and Xbox elements all mixed into one. It looks visually very confusing to my brain, but like once I start playing with it, I don't even notice. So it's really not that big of a deal. Now let's get into some of the actual functionality of the D-pad and buttons. What I really love is that the D-pad, it's like that rocker style D-pad. So instead of just having like separate buttons you can actually use it and rock over with your thumb and things like that so it's comfortable for me i know for certain games depending on what you guys play whether that's fps games racing games fighting games you might want something different but that's just what this one has and each button on here is mouse click and we hear this term a lot with pro controllers that they have mouse click buttons so this is the logitech pro right here and this thing it's very clicky, it's very light. These feel just like that and it's awesome. I mean, dude, these things are amazing. So satisfying to press. I really enjoyed them. Like that was one of my favorite things when I first picked it up. Cause obviously like a child, when I pick something up, I have to press every single button on it. That's what I did. I really enjoyed it. Let's move along to these joysticks though. So first and foremost, as you can see, they actually have these orange rings around them. These are called anti-friction rings. So with other pro controllers, what I've noticed is that the rings around are just plastic. So what ends up happening is it creates a serious drag. It starts to catch when you're um, running and, and doing repetitive motions like for example i play a lot of call of duty and i happen to make the same motions a lot and i noticed that my joystick started to stick on some of the other pro controllers that doesn't happen when i use scuff controllers because they do have the friction rings so they're really nice now what is also nice about these is that they're removable so just like the scuff xbox controller that just came out this actually has a magnetic faceplate. so if you want to swap these out all you have to do is you dig your fingers in the top right here and pull the faceplate right off and it's very minimal force you can just separate the faceplate from the controller. Now, obviously this allows us to swap out like buttons, joysticks, and things like that. But also if you want to further customize it, like if you get tired of the color that you pick when you bought the controller, you can just buy different face plates and slap them on and you'll have a fresh brand new looking controller, which is pretty cool. But if you want to remove the actual joystick, all you have to do is like I said, take off the magnetic face plate, stick two fingers underneath the joystick, and then you're going to have to pull upwards like that. And then you have your potentiometer based joystick right here and then all you have to do is pick what size joystick you want so in the box we're actually going to get three different style sticks here we have a low rise a medium rise and a high rise stick now if you're an fps gamer like me you might like to put the right stick as the high rise it gives better increased accuracy and things like that there is one more variable that you really should consider and that's whether you like convex or concave now convex kind of gives you that dome like hump appearance at the top of the stick while concave gives you that dimple effect and that's the one 
I prefer because I feel like it kind of hugs my thumb and gives me a little bit better grip. Now, the unfortunate part for me is the only stick that came with the concave shape was the low rise. Me being wanting to use a high rise with a concave stick, I had to find a solution. So basically what I did is I went ahead and I used the low rise concave stick. I put that right back on and then I took my magnetic face plate. All you have to do is simply just pop this right over the top. And what I did is I got another low rise galaxy control freak here and I just added it on because like I'm not a math major guys, but I'm pretty sure low rise plus low rise equals high rise, right? Well, something like that. Anyway, this is the most comfortable way that I want to do it. I would, however, use a high rise concave stick if scuff offered that. And I think they do on certain controllers, but it just didn't come standard in this one. That's why you see me using the control freak here. Moving right along right below that, you're going to see a whole button array going on. First and foremost, we have a power button. Then we have a profile button because as you know, this is remappable and you can choose different profiles. For example, as explained earlier, if you play FPS games, fighting games, and racing games, you can have a different profile for all three and simply swap between them by just simply pressing this button. And you can have indicators and stuff like that like different colored LEDs, which we'll get into a little bit later. But speaking of LEDs, look at these blinking buttons right here. So these are your G buttons. These are completely unique to almost any other pro controller you see on the market. You have a G1 through G5, and you can use them for a lot of different functionality. So far right now, I'm pretty much just using them for like maybe a mute and a volume up, volume down. I haven't really found a good use case for them yet, but that's only because I have this whole Rodecaster Pro situation going on over here and all of my AV, and including my headset, my micro phone go through that hardware console. So for me, it's really not going to be super useful, but for a lot of people, it would be. Moving right along around to the sides. Now we have two additional buttons. I've never seen this before on a controller, and I think these are pretty cool. These are your S1 and S2 buttons for side one, side two, I suppose. But these are also very clicky, just like a mouse. These are exceptionally great. I'm gonna show you how I remap all of these. But basically, so imagine we're playing like Halo or Warzone, right? What I like to do is I like to do my melee as my S2 over here on my right side. So as I'm gaming, if I wanna melee, instead of clicking in my thumbstick, I just boom, hit that side. And then to ping so I can alert teammates. Let's say if I'm muted in my game chat and I'm not like communicating through my mic, I like to, instead of letting my thumb come off the left stick at all and pressing the up arrow to ping a location, I just use the S1 button now and it's boom, ping. And I still have my finger on the trigger as well as on the thumbstick. So that has been exceptionally nice. And I'm really liking those side buttons so far. Flipping it around, we're gonna see something really nice here. So this is the Pro Model. And one of the great features about the Pro Model is that it actually comes with this rubberized Pro Style Hexagon grip. Now we've seen this grip before on different controllers like the Reflex or the Impact Pro. And again, I love it because it wraps the entirety from the side all the way back back around to the inside. It doesn't stop halfway. It's not a quarter grip. It's a full 180 half grip. It feels phenomenal. It feels great. And as it wears down over time, it still feels good. I've never even torn the grip off my other controller. So I think they've got a good thing going with it. Definitely highly recommend. And then also you're going to notice that it has four buttons. Now these are remappable and two of them are removable. Now the paddle system here is really great. Actually, it's kind of will throw you off for a quick second because they actually have different clicking mechanisms in each. So the inner ones are just that mouse click click like earlier which is great and easy to press and the outer ones kind of have that hard uh, shell button more of that dull and soft click they don't have such a hard bounce now this as odd as it sounds actually works really well because when I use the controller like this one this is my scuff reflex pro and this is the ps5 model it has a similar button layout it feels the same but it's quite different now these buttons on this one are a little bit harder to press the outer ones are great and they are very reminiscent of what we get in the Envision Pro. The inner ones are still that hard to press click. Now these have softened up over time, but boy, let me tell you when I was first trying to hit these inner buttons, it was actually kind of hurting the inner part of my middle finger because you had to press pretty hard to make it happen. Now the fact that they've actually isolated that problem and I guess enough gamers had that issue, they've made the inside buttons very soft press mouse click very responsive very clicky and they feel great so it's crazy to me because i thought this was the best paddle system on the market at one point but they've actually gone and improved it so kudos to scuff on that one looking up we have two different options to play this control we can go with low latency plugged in through a usb-c cable that is provided or you can use the dongle attachment here and you can play wirelessly on your pc and to switch between the two there's a little switch right here and all you have to do is simply toggle it over for one toggle it over for the other 
then you're in action. Now, through my testing, I have not noticed any latency difference between playing wirelessly and playing plugged in, which is absolutely phenomenal because I am so paranoid. I always play plugged in no matter what, but finally, I'm actually playing ranked games wirelessly, and it just eliminates one more wire because as you can see with my Sennheiser, I actually use a wired headset, which is kind of annoying, but I really prefer you know the functionality of it. So to be able to remove the wire that comes out of my controller, major plus for me. Rounding off our hardware features, I want to talk about the trigger for a moment and let me just tell you right now these things are phenomenal they're great obviously nothing really special about the bumpers in fact they're not even mouse click that's weird to me I, I really thought they'd be mouse click that was a little bit of a letdown but it's totally made up for when we talk about the actual triggers who cares about the bumpers when you got these type of triggers so first and foremost these triggers have a wing like effect that goes upward and let me tell you right now these are like I would have to estimate probably 25 percent longer than the scuff reflex one the reflex ones are very stubby and very short and they just really fit your finger and that's it the envision pro ones there's like a lot of wiggle room on that tail and this it is just so comfortable. It almost feels ergonomic for my pointer finger, which sounds odd, but you'd really have to feel it and test it out. And then on top of that, of course, you have the full travel path like a normal controller where you can just use the trigger like this. Or if you flip the little trigger stop right underneath the controller, you actually have a mouse click hair trigger and they are phenomenal. It reminds me of the Scuff Instinct Pro, the Xbox model. Those had phenomenal trigger stops on them. Some of the best I've ever tried, but this one actually lets you do the full travel path and the trigger stop feature, which is great. The only thing I don't like on them is for me, it's really hard to flip the little switch that's underneath the actual trigger itself. I kind of wish it was still like in the side because that's just so much better for placement, but it is what it is. Like I'm not flipping them back and forth a lot, so it's really not that big of a deal. Playing video games with this controller feel smooth and comfortable. The overall shape of this controller is one of the best I've ever tested and the ergonomics just makes sense. The majority of the buttons feel light, clicky, and responsive just like a normal gaming mouse would and I love the fact that there's so many different customizable buttons. The triggers are well placed, easy to grip, and have a great bounce to them. And of course we can't forget about the fluid round motion of the joysticks. Coming in at $180 plus tax and shipping, this controller definitely is a premium price point but I can say without a shadow of a doubt that after only one week of gaming with the Envision Pro, this will absolutely be my daily driver for the foreseeable future. If you guys liked today's video, hit the subscribe button and go check out this video next.